Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey folks, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making an axe for a friend of mine, Justin, with the Good of the Land channel. So, a couple weeks ago, or I don't know, I guess it's been like over a month now. Time's gone by fast. We went to the Good of the Land Festival in Lindale, Texas, which was an event for YouTube creators to come down and just make stuff and meet people and socialize and network. And so um, I got to meet Justin in person there. In one of our previous videos, Justin um, actually mentioned that he wanted this hatchet. How much are you selling the axe that you made yesterday for? I'm not selling it. But if you sold it, how much would it be? Just like it is? Oh my gosh, I'm not selling it. How much finish then? I'm not finishing it. Okay. Do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> Which is a, the hatchet that I forged as a demo piece at his festival. So he doesn't know that I'm doing this, but I figure why not? So in this video, I'm going to be finishing this axe. It's already been forged, of course, but it, it, it has not been ground, heat treated, needs a handle, needs everything else to make it look like an axe. So let's get started. Got my logo in this now, and we are ready to do some heat treating on the axe or anything else. Justin's axe is ready to be quenched now. It's been in the heat treating oven for a while. It is up to temperature. It's soaked at temperature, ready to go into the oil. This will harden the axe. Ah, oh, that's hot. Ah. There we go. And steamy. Good job, Lane. Thank you. It feels so weird quenching just one axe. <laughs> Normally quenching like 20. Yeah, this is just for you, Justin. I hope you feel special. Because you are special. <laughs> Axe is heat treated and out of the oven. Now it's time for a handle. Now I'm gonna go with a 15 inch long handle for this hatchet because I feel that is a very nice handle length for this size hatchet. You get a lot of leverage on it. So handle making is a three step process. Now this is a very complicated process. Now it first starts out, basically the most important thing is wood. So you gotta get a piece of wood. Now, 
Now that we've got step number one out of the way, which was getting wood, we have to, well, what we've done is actually, um, actually uh, profiled the wood. So now we have something which more resembles an ax handle. So step two, making your wood look like an ax handle. Um, and then the final step, step number three, follow me along and we'll get to that. Boom, number three. Step number three is just finishing out the handle. It's that simple, it's a three step. One, get your wood. Two, shape it like an ax handle. Three, finish it. There you go. I hope that you learned something. Jeez, that's strong. That works good. Now that I've shown you my fancy three-step handle making process, I'm gonna go into sharpening and I will actually go a little bit more in depth in sharpening than I did the handle making. Most wood cutting axes, your edge is gonna have a convex grind on it. So convex grind is like a bird's beak grind. It looks like a bullet, kind of like the profile of a bullet. It's um, the opposite of a hollow grind, which is a convex, sorry, concave grind like this. Convex is gonna be rounded on the outside. So the advantages of a convex grind is that uh, it's stronger than a flat grind and stronger than a hollow grind because it has more material on the cutting edge. You think of it as the more material that's on the cutting edge, the stronger that it's gonna be. But strength doesn't always necessarily, it's not necessarily gonna be a good thing for us because with the thicker the edge, sometimes we also lose more cutting ability with the ax. Axes get a convex edge because they're taking so much impact, so much force is being put into this blade when it's hitting wood as opposed to like on the opposite end of the spectrum, a shaving, a straight razor, which is a super, super thin blade and it's all hollow ground. You know, it's just for shaving here. If you were to take that straight razor and smack a piece of wood with it, you would destroy the straight razor. It would be terrible. I make the convex grind with a slack belt. There's lots of different ways that you can do this slack belt grinding. You can actually just have like this slack belt right here, or you can have a flat platen and take the platen out and use the slack between the contact wheels. Or you can use what I'm using, which is a rotary platen, which has a rubber serpentine belt that runs underneath the abrasive belt. And I can adjust that tension actually and, and get it really dialed in. So it gives me the convex, but it also gives me more support for sharpening than just a simple slack belt like this would. For our intents and purposes, I'm gonna be convex grinding at about a, shoot, what do I do? About a 20 degree angle. But you gotta understand that since this isn't a flat grind, um, the angle is constantly changing across that cutting edge, right? So like at the apex of the cutting edge, it's gonna be more obtuse than the start of the grind, which is gonna be more acute angle. So the start of my grind, or I guess maybe like the middle arc of my convex grind is gonna be close to that angle that I'm looking at, which is around 20 degrees. So the apex of the grind, I don't know what the exact angle is, probably somewhere around 30, 35, which is a, a pretty standard usable multi-purpose angle for an ax blade. After I've gotten the primary convex edge on the ax, I add in a little extra step. This is very, it's a very quick step. It doesn't remove a lot of material, doesn't, um, doesn't take a lot of time, but it, it really, I think it really helps the forms of the ax and also the overall look of the ax. Um, and that is what I call removing the speed bump. So if you look at this edge here, this is before the speed bump is removed. 
And what I call the speed bump is this ridge that is the transition between forged steel and ground steel. So this, this line right here, and you put your finger on it and you can feel that distinct transition. It's an abrupt transition. And that's uh, what I call a speed bump. When you're chopping into wood, that's gonna be a lot of resistance really quickly into your cut. So I'm gonna come in at a much shallower angle, maybe like a five degree angle, or as close I can, as I can get it without grinding into the rest of my ax. Now I'm just gonna take one or two swipes across it, and that will just knock that edge down, and then I can blend my grinds together, which will even give me a better convex grind. Now for my final step, I'm gonna be switching to a much higher grit belt. I use a lower grit, 80 grit, to rough out the bevel. I'm switching to a higher grit here to finish it out. And this is gonna be a much faster step than the 80 grit, because the 80 grit is where we really establish that edge, get the angles that we want, get the, um, you know, the foundation that we need. And this, I'm going to not really focus on one specific angle, whereas in the beginning, I'm, I'm knocking down my 20 degree angle that I'm knocking down my speed bump and I'm done. Uh, it doesn't look attractive, but I've got my bevels where they need to be. Now this is gonna be blending. So I'm gonna do take out the 80 grit marks and I'm also gonna blend in the two bevels and convex that edge in. I know that you watching this can't feel this, but if you were to feel this, there's a dramatic difference between first the feel of the edge with the 80 grit, not because of the grit, but because of the, the smoothed in bevels. And then this, where I've blended those two in, and you've got like a seamless transition between the forged body and then the cutting edge. And that's what you're looking for, is just that really smooth, transition, no speed bumps, so to speak. And that's gonna cut really well. Now it's time to remove the burr, because right now it's got this big burr on it. Once we take that off, it'll reveal the actual cutting edge and we'll be razor sharp. You know what we're going to have to do, Jacob? Shaving? Yes. The obligatory arm shave test. Who's here? There's someone here. Who is that? Huh? Who is that? Oh, I can, I can use this. It's someone that lives around here. Should I do the right or the left? Ooh. The right has more hair because that's the one I don't shave as much. And the left is kind of spotty because that's where I shave, but that's also where I get burned like on a daily basis, as you can see, and it's kind of, kind of spotty. So I feel like if I shave this one, it'll just match the theme. 
But if I shave this one, I'll get more hair, but it'll look more out of place. You know, I'll get more looks. You know, because I don't get looks on my arms already of how they look, so. Well, I think left is a safer option. Left, than... safer, okay. Yeah. Let's go for left. Okay. We'll go this patch right here. Well, give me a second, let me get nice oh, I'm going, I'm going, here I go. Nice and tight here. Go for it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep, just don't move too much. Yeah, it's pretty short. I'm getting all my dead hair. Yeah. I'm exfoliating at the same time. There you go. Wow, that much. looks really weird. I need to do the whole arm now. It's working. Oh my gosh, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Good dry shave. Is it, is it working? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. You look is that my skin or is that my hair? I think that's your skin. I'm afraid to cut it. I'm afraid to cut it. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I'm going anyways. Okay. YOLO. Oh my god. Did it work? Yeah. You want me to take a picture of it? Yes. <laughs> that's what Chad does. What? Have you ever seen him do that? What? Chad does that? Yes, all the time. <laughs> we got a wedge from the wedge box. There's a wedge box? There's a wedge box. I didn't know that. You haven't seen the wedge box? No. Oh, the wedge box? That's my wedge box. That's awesome. What's with the turtle? Oh, that's Chad's turtle. He puts incense in it. It's an incense turtle. And Chad believes that that makes him work better or something. <laughs> I don't question it. I don't question it. We just need to do late night videos when nobody's around. When am I supposed to sleep and rest? That's not important. I work like two shifts every day. No, I go through like two different rounds of employees throughout the day. In the morning, I've got Chad. And then Chad leaves at 6.30. And then my mom comes in at like two. And Mercer comes in at four. And so then I'm with them until nine at night. And then I go to sleep, and then I do it the next day. Have you seen my violin? <laughs> <laughs> to the wood grinder. All right, so you saw me grind the wedge and that is so that it custom fits into this ax. So I cut the wedges on the bandsaw just slightly oversized. That way I can custom fit each batch of axes that I do exactly to their eye size um, because you might have like a 1 16th of an inch variance or something between batches or say you switch a drift, even though it's the same drift size, you've changed the actual drift and there might be a very slight difference there. And that difference really does matter in a wedge. This is something that I've started doing more recently where I've really started custom shaping the wedges for every batch of axes so that um, it fits in there. And then as the wedge, of course, is getting wider, it stops. So now that I've got all of my pieces, that would be the wedge, the ax head, and the ax handle. It's time to assemble them. This is a very, very critical moment and I have come up with um, my own way, which works well for me to do this. So I first begin by loosely putting the head on the handle. Add a little bit of wood glue into the kerf. This is called cheap insurance. Now we add the wedge. Make sure that this is going straight. And I also make sure that the tops of the wedges are flat. This is important. All right, so I just get it started. 
Drive that down a little further. All right, so you're probably wondering at this point why I've stopped the wedge there and why this ax head isn't seated all the way down to where it's supposed to go, which you can barely clearly see by the impression made by the lug into the hickory. Um, the way that I'm gonna do this is by driving the wedge in by hitting the end of the handle. This helps prevent excessive cracking on the wedge. Uh, if you were to hit the wedge directly with the hammer, it's such a small piece of wood that it's kind of delicate. Um, by hitting it on the end of the handle, you kind of disperse the force over a larger surface area. It's less direct. You'll get the same amount of power going into it, but a lot less impact to the wedge. So as I'm driving the wedge in, this will seat itself down. The reason that I don't start with this all the way down and then drive the wedge in is because since this is such a tight fit to begin with, excessive or, or extra, you know, having this ax head drive past that point, it'll be so tight that it'll actually break the handle. It'll knock out chunks. It'll split the wood um, on the ends here. So you have to kind of find this balancing point to where, you know, this distance is relative to the wedge going in. So that once this wedge drives in, this hopefully is matching up around the same time. So it all goes together smoothly. Time to oil it. Nice wedge. No gaps. That is a tight fit. Nice clear hickory. I'll clean it up, we'll do beauty shots. Thanks so much for watching as we finish my friend Justin's axe. He is with the Good of the Land channel. Again, I'm sure I've mentioned that already. Um, this is a hatchet that I made at this festival. I wanted to give it to him because he expressed some interest in it actually in one of our earlier videos. So this is a total surprise to him. He has no idea. This is a complete custom axe forged at his event. 15 inch hickory handle. Um, and I think that it turned out pretty neat. And it was actually fun to be able to grind an axe or make an axe that is different from what I always do um, because we've been so caught up in production lately that it's just been like monotonous, same thing over and over. So this was nice to be able to make an axe that is a little bit different from the norm and got great feel to it. So I'm gonna put this in the oil for an overnight soak. We just took it out for the close of this video, but I will condition this for 24, or sorry, overnight, not 24 hours. Um, so again, 
If you enjoyed it, please let us know in the comments below. And if you are already subscribed, go ahead and turn on the notification bell so you see videos like this sooner. If you're not subscribed, you may consider doing so um, to stay up to date with us and our cool projects. So we'll see you later. That was, a, that was a good, no. <laughs> that was a good, that was a good plus. Oh, thank you. In the oil. I'm out of here.